Hello everybody and welcome, my name is Ursa Ryan and we're playing the Congo because I actually got the DLC to work. Oh my lord, that in itself was an achievement after the release, eh? What fun we had. <laughs> I literally cannot wait to get started into this because it looks so amazing but I just wanted to very quickly say thank you so much for the support on the last series. We've just been looking at the results of kind of the first video on the Caesar series. Oh lord, I think it's the most watched video we've ever had in the first few hours it's the most watched day we've ever had. Thank you so much. What a rush. It's, oh, ugh, it's insane. Right, Congo time. Nzinga, the new leader of the Congo, fixes the big Congo issue of not being able to put holy sites down and you get a sort of Mayan bonus of having extra yields if your city is in the same continent as your capital and then minus if you don't. This leads to, yep, as you've all guessed, a very, very powerful sieve, an incredibly powerful sieve and because we're playing as the Congo, we still get the bonuses to food and production and faith and gold from relics especially, but also sculptures and artifacts. We still get the artist points, we still get the musician points, we still get the merchant points, we still have the unique swordsman and we still have the unique district that helps with food growth. So we're going to be playing a very tall, very meaty Congo, using all those relics and artifacts and sculptures to generate a ton. And of course, because we can have a religion, we'll be going reliquaries as well. I was thinking the relic build with Congo is insanely powerful. And do I want to lean into it and go for some game modes like Heroes and Legends and Void Singers and Secret societies to really show off how crazy it can be and I thought you know what no no game modes straight game deity standard speed balanced start I think this is the Highland script everything left alone city states random six players small map yeah we're just diving into it I'm going to show you how powerful the Congo is without any additional help oh boy reliquaries build was always powerful before and now it's even more powerful. Remember, you can come to Discord if you want to take this exact save file for yourself because I keep all the save files on Discord. You can copy and paste it onto your computer and play. And remember as well, I do have Patreon and coffee, including a tip jar if you want to support the channel. It's really appreciated and it is really, really helping at the moment. So thank you again for all the support. Remember, like, comment, subscribe. I'm, oh, I feel dirty having to say it every time, but it really does make a difference when I say, please like the video. Right. Turn one, let's get started. One of the low key amazing things about the Congo is the starting bias. You start typically in the center of the map near rainforest and rainforest means lots of plains hills, which is exactly what we've started on today, which is wonderful. So an extra production. It also means lots of spices, chocolate, bananas, all of the resources that give you tons and tons of early game yields. That is a 5-2 tile and there's a 4-2 uh, tile literally right down there. Did I say 5-2? It's a 3-2 tile. It's a 5 yield. I had it mixed up in my head. I'm going crazy already. We've only just started this playthrough. It's a really good place to spot. I think I could move onto that tile or that tile, but those are grassland hills, so I would actually lose the production. And I believe this plains hills upwards in that direction. Uh, it does have fresh water. That looks like it might be a lake that it's on rather than a river. So I think I am going to settle in place. We're working this magnificent tile. Eventually, we'll work this tile as our second tile. It'll be a really, really good start. I I'm looking forward to this. In fact, actually I'm gonna actually because we have the three two and the extra production I can do the miraculous one scout straight into settler star it's a really good one now we're gonna go reliquaries reliquaries is a religion that triples our faith and tourism from relics it's really really awesome and because we are a Congo we can pick it the AI never picks it so we don't need to necessarily rush a religion super quickly what I'm going to do instead is go for irrigation now hanging gardens is one of those wonders which is very useful in Increasing growth rate by 15% in all cities. Very handy. I get 10% on all yields, including in my capital. That's very handy. But effectively what it means is that I'm getting more food. Now, if I start stacking the growth modifiers in my city, I'm going to get some very, very silly city populations and with populations come yields of every single thing it means a big pingala capital it means i can have lots of districts i want to be putting down theater squares i want to be putting down holy sites reliquaries doesn't really help with city growth it just helps with faith generation so i kind of want to lean into those things and going for city growth is going to be very important and check out that for a hanging garden spot just a useless tile that is just there so that's what we're going to try and rush because we've got such crazy production on all our tiles and i'm getting 10 percent extra i think going for that wonder could be a very good move so that's what we're going to be going for today we'll see what's in the goody hut um a relic I'm not even joking I have not modded this <laughs> 
Oh, you're not going to believe me. Nobody's going to believe me. Honestly, I have... Oh, yeah, that's a relic stat. So, you know, that's... That's two food production, one faith, four gold. I, I honestly, like there are, there are no gameplay mods in this. There are no gameplay mods. This is raw sieve. That was RNG. Oh Lord. The Caesar start I had in the last game was good enough, but this, this is, um, yeah. Okay. So I've got five and a half faith already. Oh my Lord. And I'm getting more food and production and yeah, okay. Yeah, I think I can work with this. I think I can work with this. Remember, save is in... You know what? Actually, I very rarely do this. And this is a massive, massive reason to come to Discord, right? I have left a second save in Discord on this turn. Turn six, population two, with a relic in your capital, okay? So come to Discord and you can play this game with a turn six relic as the Congo. I, oh, I'm so excited. I, I, I always get excited before starting a new game but this this may have this may have just pushed it over oh lord right yeah we're going straight for a settler i am getting out and actually i want to see if i can go and get some of these luxuries um we're going to keep an eye on the continent split it looks like we've actually we've started in africa how apt this is the perfect game oh boy i am i am yeah oh man we're gonna have like basically choice of any pantheon we want oh like I can't even, I cannot even. Now I pretty much have full choice. And one of the things that immediately comes out to me is Sacred Path. I could get extra faith adjacency from Rainforest and I have a lot of Rainforest around me. We also have the option to lean into Lady of the Reeds and Marshes. I do have some marsh around and it looks like there is a reasonable amount of it around me. Culture from plantations is always good on any sort of rainforest start because we've got loads of bananas and spices and they've got tobacco. So that will be pretty decent. I am, however, going to go for the three builder rather than the settler. Now, I really, really want the settler, but I'm generating it so quickly because my production is just so crazy already. I'm on 13 production. OK, so I'm going to go for the builder. This gives me city growth rate of 10 percent higher. That will stack with hanging gardens, which is 15 percent, and I'll be on 25 percent. And we're going to start a city growth just multiplier game where I lean into it. I'm, this is whether this is the most optimum start or not. I don't know. Remember, you can play this game yourself if you want to play it a different way but I'm gonna lean into city growth rate because I just get the feeling that it's going to be very handy look already that's adding another food into my capital and that'll be in every city and that'll be in every place I, I think it's worth it there's nothing my builder can do right now but I will be able to get these uh, plantations down really quickly so that will help to keep the city growing so in order to make reliquaries work really well we're gonna be beelining Mont Saint Michel now this is a wonder you get with divine right and it means that every time you make an apostle it gains the martyr ability immediately my aim is to find somebody else with religion and throw apostles at them until i get 16 relics it's going to take a little bit of time but it is worth it now what you can do is you can make it so that candy the city state is in the game that gives you a relic every time you find a natural wonder i haven't rigged the game like that i don't know if candy's going to be in it this is the only other reliable way of getting relics so that's what we're going to be going for I'm actually just having a look to see if there's a resource i can farm to boost irrigation uh preslav okay preslav's not bad interesting loyalty per turn for cities in each account we're building it does give me a production towards my settler which isn't the worst thing but if there's a farmable resource uh especially if i could maybe there's even a second settle like that i know that i can see there's lots and lots of resources up this way there is a wheat in that direction as well like that would shave a couple turns off irrigation i don't want to want to hard build it if i can help it there is something there oh so if i were to move my settler hang on so next turn i can go to this space that's going to be one turn two turns three turns four turns five turns probably six seven in order to go and then work that that would save time so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go and settle on top of that tobacco. So I'm going to move my warrior involved. My builder is going to make the way over now and the settler will follow along. And I think that is going to save me time. Perfect. I have such a crazy production. I think I'm actually going to pump out a second settler. I would never normally do this, but I think I'm going to because I might as well. I guess the other thing I could do, this is a Highlands map. It's basically a landlocked map. So there's a lot to explore as I could now just scout rush. That would let my city just grow a little bit 
Let's do a couple of scouts. We're going to go for the beautiful triple scout opener. And that lets me just explore a little bit harder. Urban planning, good. Discipline, good. I don't need the extra faith income because we've already got our pantheon, which is just wonderful. It wants to go to that tile, good. And it wants to go to this tile, good. Okay, yeah, I think I'm going to time this so the irrigation will work perfectly. This looks like such a good map for us. It really does. Oh, the full population now as well. We've got so many 2-2 two -two tiles. This is such a good start for just casual production. I'm up to 17 production already. Already. Oh, so those are the two bonus scouts. They're now out. I mean, I've got such a great amount of food. I'm wondering whether or not... If I just throw one more scout out and then go hanging gardens, I'm going to get hanging gardens probably in two turns time. I'm going to put one more out. I know I could get granary and monument, but I've got gold for a reason, you know. And once I get hanging gardens, I feel a lot better about my uh, start. That is somebody else. Byzantium. Hello, scourge of Basel. I, uh, Byzantium's a bit problematic to start next to a lot of the time. Especially if you start going for religions. Now, the reason I'm not going for religion immediately is because I was hoping I'd get the astrology boost from somewhere, but I don't need to rush holy sites. Reason being, nobody ever goes for reliquaries, so that's fine. I'm also going to come off irrigation now. Let's research animal husbandry. We'll go mining. It's looking good. Here is city number two, just in time for Byzantium to find me. <laughs> <laughs> just so they can see me existing and get really annoyed about that settling. Uh, I'm going to just get one slinger out whilst I wait for this to get to population two. That'll just give me just a little bit of defensive force in case Byzantium decides to get nasty. And there's another recon. So this is actually the fabled five scout start. It is totally over the top, but what you're going to do? At any rate, here is the farm. There is irrigation and we can immediately slap down an 11 turn hanging gardens. I think this is worth it. If we can pick up that wonder, we are set for the game. Like, that will be the city growth just solidified and in. It'll be wonderful. Byzantium would literally give me everything for that relic, but you know what? I'm not going to let you have it. Um, my cities are being kept happy with my luxury. I could sell it, but they're only offering me at the moment three gold per turn. I'm going to wait. If they, if they give me a lot of money, I might take them up on the offer just because I can use that gold to buy myself another settler, which would be quite fun. We've already got early empire on turn 20. Like, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> this is ridiculous. Also with food growth, the crazy thing is that the 10% modifier that I get from my ability with Zynga, that applies to food before consumption. So it's actually applying to the 15 food I'm getting, or the 17 food I'm getting overall, not after the 10 food comes out from population. So it's even, it multiplies even more than you would necessarily immediately think. It, it, it's crazy. Animal husbandry, done. Uh, I think I might actually attempt to circumnavigate the globe here. It looks like I found big old desert. That's no fun. I'm still finding tribal huts like everywhere, which is lovely stuff. But yeah, my scouts are going to try and circumnavigate the globe. Highlands is a landlocked map, so we shouldn't have too much of an issue doing that. But I'm also going to stay central. I want to know where the rainforest belt goes around the world. I Basically central cities, that's the main thing I want to be going for today. Also, I started with not one, but two sources of horses. There's actually were horses underneath where I put the hanging gardens. That is a big few moment for me, honestly. Uh, 118 gold they would give me now. Very good, very good. It's tempting. It's very tempting. Bronze working boosted in a tribal hut. We're getting lots of era score from all of these tribal huts. It looks like Byzantium has settled away from me as well as towards me, which is lovely to see. Leventa is below me and they have been met by unmet player. Someone is in that sort of direction. Okay, good to know. Foreign trade boosted because I found another continent, Australia. Okay, well, we don't want to be settling into that. Any cities I put in another continent will give me minus 15%. Amenities are going to be a bit of a problem this game. It is something I do you need to keep an eye on and the reason being is that amenities tend to spawn by continent like a certain continent like Africa will start with like four different amenities and those will spawn on that continent and they won't spawn anywhere else so there's, there's different variations of it and whatever but typically if you never leave your continent you'll only find so many amenities so I kind of want to think about that entertainment complexes water parks stuff like that may be more important than I would first think Oh, Wonder just got built, but it's not the one I was going for. It's the Etamananki. Oh, 
<laughs> heart in the mouth moment there. I was like, you're kidding me. Don't you dare. There they are. Hanging Gardens increases growth by 15% in all cities. And it gives, oh, look at that horse just hidden right by it. Look at the horse. The horse is in the Hanging Garden. The Hanging Gardens, they're actually owned by horses, this game. They are the only people. Look, it's just there, randomly in the entrance. I love that. Uh, it also gives housing in my capital. So the capital will continue now to grow. Lovely, lovely stuff. And also beautiful luxury as well. So we've gone back up to plus one and zero. Oh boy, what a start. What a start. I, I'm gonna have to just try and go for a couple of settlers now just to make sure that we actually grab some of this land around us. Byzantium have four cities already and eight pop. I have eight pop and two cities. I'm actually gonna go to 10 pop next turn. The population is not a problem, but I do wanna make sure that I spread out. Luxuries are important. And I'm going to need a few different types here. There is, for instance, tobacco, which I've already got. But cotton is a one I haven't got. There is some amber over in that direction that I want to pick up as well. So there's loads of different things that we want to introduce into our empire here. Uh, political philosophy. Getty, another fave city-state. Not the one I want. Nobody's met this one, though. That's cool. Rapanoi. Um, I was just thinking, actually, I could Stonehenge it. I've got stone and I have flat land next to the stone. It, it would technically be possible to Stonehenge it. Oh, I need, need bronze working to do it, but it just depends, it just depends. I don't know, look at that already, 25% amenity growth. And oh yeah, food, food is gonna be big. We're gonna have big chunky cities today. Met another city-state, Kamasi. Looks like we're going to be trading with city-states today. I don't mind that at all. That is fine. Uh, how close am I to circumnavigating? Not that close at the moment. I would like to do it in the ancient era. This is always a trick with Highlands maps if you can get away with it. It's, it's quite a nice little strategy. Five extra era score would massively help me to get myself into a golden age and go monumentality. Uh, monumentality would mean that I can use this glut of faith for some more settlers. Delicate Arch and Babylon. Okay, that was the first um, luxury wonder, natural wonder, sorry, that I found all game. Crazy. They want to buy my horses for a lot and they're quite far away from me, so I'm going to let them do that. I don't want to sell horses to Byzantium particularly. Oh, they actually have horses themselves. Okay, they're going to throw horses at me regardless, so I will take them. There's astrology. I think it's probably time to start putting a couple of holy sites down now. Again, we didn't need to rush it particularly, but right now it feels like a good move for us. How much is a settler? 440. If I can generate that gold before that settler finishes, I can just produce another one and go to four cities almost immediately, which I think would be a good shout, a good look for us. Bronze working, it will unlock iron, but also will let me chop down rainforest in some locations, which would be quite handy. Oh, you know what? I'm just going to try for Stonehenge. Uh, why, why not? Why not? Um, I'm just holding that settler for a turn. Just, I'm, I'm going to buy a settler and then produce the settler from that city. I think it works that way around. I don't think anyone that I've met is producing Stonehenge yet. But I'm sure we'll see. Um, it doesn't matter, by the way. Even if Stonehenge gets built, I'll just put that production into another settler or something like that. China. Okay, well, maybe the wonders are going to get built then. China are not going to like me because I am I am going to be building wonders this game. I have crazy production already. I'm at 20 production in my city. And I've only got two improvements. No, one improvement in the city. That's it. I'm just generating it from tiles right now. That's That's crazy. What's going on? Oh, that's a settler just randomly lurking around. You are lucky. I am in a good mood, China. Otherwise, I would steal that in a heartbeat. Jerusalem, another faith city-state. That's ridiculous. Blimey. Oh, 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 there's the gap. That's not, not big. It's about 20 towers. I think I can probably do that before the age runs out. I think we should be able to go golden age, uh, especially because at the moment, the 10 turn timer hasn't started just yet. So I just managed to sell some horses. That's really good. Let's buy the settler and then finish this settler quickly. And then Stonehenge will finish in a second. And in the meantime, a holy site can go down. Beautiful. It's 11 turns. It's going to take a little while. Somebody is generally generating great faith, profity, points, whatever they are. Oh, they're, okay, China built the Edmund Dankey as kind of, I mean, that's not really a surprise, is it? He's amazing at it. This whole deal, what he does. Oh, I got an envoy from a travel hut. Nice. I could suzerain Preslav immediately. Oh, they're not very good, though. That's the problem. They're not very good. Do I save the envoy? What other things? Oh, if I build a boat, if I build a single galley, I would generate two envoys immediately. And a spearman. Uh, that would give me one, a trade route. That's city-state's quite far away, though. Yeah, actually, there, there are options there. 
I think I saw one that was an envoy for masonry, um, for boosting masonry. So I'm going to go do that quickly. That'll be easy to do. Where do I want to go? Where do I want to go? Fresh water is a problem, this map. Massive problem. I reckon a city down in this direction would be good because there's some luxuries over there. There's some cotton, uh, but it's a bit, bit lax, a bit, bit, not very much in the way of luxury, to be fair. I kind of want to stop Byzantium getting too close to me, to be fair, but I don't really want to fight them early game as well. I just plonk one down on this black sea to make sure we can get the cotton. Let's do that. It's, it's a little bit of an aggressive settle, but at least it stops them from coming through this mountain pass. Venice. Yeah, trading with city-states is going to be big money today between Kamasi, Chinggeti, and Venice. Big city-state trade bonuses. There's bronze working. How much iron did I get? At least one source of it. Oh, right there. Okay, that's good. We, we like to have at least some iron. I think my unique swordsman requires iron, doesn't it? Yeah, five of it. Not much, but a little bit of iron so we'll we'll go for that that's awesome let's pick up wheel quickly and there's the boost the masonry which means i get an envoy at leventa leventa i didn't have one at that's fine india india okay okay you're quite a well, long way from me so i think that will be fine you'll be a good good ally and hunza as well yeah lots of interesting city states this game it's early empire time i could i mean urban planning is pretty decent i could stick in settler card but i don't think i need to do that right now i think the extra little production we're getting is good i am gonna oh do i go pingala initially or do i see if we can go for amani i'm gonna go amani we're gonna go armani uh, i'm gonna put her into chinggeti hong kong wow so many city states this game is, is mad oh byzantium wants to be friends i will oh if i can do that that would be awesome what would you give me for open borders quite a lot so you have open borders now so they should like me but i can make friends with them i'll take it because i don't want to have to fight too early game and yeah that would i mean that would be awesome basically means that i'd be free from the fear of attack pretty early game Oh, I'm just about to circumnavigate. I'm just about to do it. One, two, there we go. Era score of plus five. I think, I mean, that should guarantee my golden age lucky. Oh, Pisani doesn't want to be friends with me. Come on. I'm just about to settle right next to you, and I don't want you to get too annoyed at that. So can we just, like, come to sort of a peaceful conclusion right now? That would be awesome. Where's the Plains Hill? Is that a Plains Hill? No, it's a Grassland Hill. I think I might have to settle on a Plains Hill if I can. Go settle on this one. I've got some good tiles around it. I think I'll be fine. And there is just another luxury amber this time. Just keeps my cities happy. That's the main thing. Oh, interesting. Uh, Babylon has spices. They don't like me. What would it take? Will you let me buy this? No, they won't. Oh, that's frustrating. Sometimes if I have a luxury... Oh, don't keep me out of the borders. I want to get back in the borders. Let me be safe. No, they're not going to let me back in. Oh, there's too many bars. I might lose that scout. They condemned me to die by closing the borders there oh yeah sometimes if you find an ai with a copy of a luxury that you've only got one of you can buy that luxury and then sell yours for way more money now byzantium doesn't want friendship it probably means that they're going to try and attack me at some point so we're gonna have to just keep a little eye on that but i'm happy i'm happy with how things are we're just gonna see if we can hold this city for as long as possible i'm just gonna produce another slinger in it quickly it'll be fine i'm sure holy site complete it was a beautiful one so i get the extra era score i'm just about to finish stonehenge actually as well so that's pretty cool i'm gonna spend a little bit of time just building infrastructure get this granary to let the city grow a little further beyond its boundaries because its housing is just a little limited and i need this city to be big so that this city keeps its happiness and loyalty and fealty to me so number four over in this direction that's looking lovely as well treat this one to a builder quickly yeah i'm actually quite happy with this so let's have a look and see where we're sitting in 14 pop 11 6 10 and 13 only india is keeping up population wise with me i think we should take that as a bit of a win and here is stone henge three great profit i think this may even be the first religion which is crazy reliquaries is going to make my relic give me another two times on faith which i think the relic is giving me five faith per turn at the moment so i'm hoping that'll be another bonus 10. oh man yeah that's really good and i just took over chingeti as well the era score's flooding and i've never had this much excess era score it's it's mad 
Byzantium, by the way, definitely have troops on the border. Definitely have troops on the border. So it looks like they're going to try and attack me. They don't like the fact that I settle near them. I think they were going to attack me anyway, being honest with you. So what we're going to do is we're going to do just a quick slinger spam just to get a little bit of defense. And I'm going to beeline archery. We have decent gold income, but I want to see where the troops are. I want to fight against them. Next turn, I'll switch to Agogi just to speed that up. Saladin, we actually met everyone in the ancient era. That's another bunch of era score. I almost wish, I almost wish that we didn't get all of it at the moment. Like it's it's almost too much too soon. But there is my religion as well. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be a peaceful, lovely Ursa. And I'm going to give myself reliquaries as discussed, as well as, I haven't done this one in a while, Defender of the Faith. Five combat strength when within the borders of friendly cities that follow the religion. It should help to keep me nice and protected, which is exactly what we want to see. Switching in a googie quick where are you there you are lovely give myself pingala in my capital because my capital is plump yeah look at all these troops just hanging out on my borders just hanging out chilling don't mind about us we're we're fine might have to go for iron working immediately after this <laughs> keep myself safe I, I i don't think we're in too much trouble our cities are actually difficult to get to we've got some good mountain passes this is probably the most vulnerable city but that i think i can hold with enough time and effort and as you can see we're starting to generate slingers now this will push my military score up considerably like it's not going to go crazy but if i have like at least a little bit of military score you'll see that the ai will back off just a little bit they'll leave me alone and so i'm just going to quickly build a spearman because one of the city states wanted it didn't it a hong kong wants it a chingeti wanted it okay cool that's that's awesome so we'll we'll get at least one little bonus and i'm actually thinking and this sounds ridiculous but i might get a galley in this city because it's got 30 strength it'll make my cities a bit tougher but i two city states wanted it the galley in this sea is totally pointless like <laughs> it's really not that useful but it would be an amusing thing to do oh i got a recon unit in a tribal hut another the recon unit <laughs> who'd, have, who'd have guessed i have an army of cats because <laughs> oh look oh look what a surprise what a surprise a surprise war yeah wasn't very surprising was it oh well what are you gonna do right we've got slingers everywhere i'm just about to upgrade to the archer next turn who have you met babylon oh babylon are the only ones to denounce me i was gonna see if i could get them in a joint war but alas not likely to happen right pull back to there quickly let them attack my city next turn my city will gain about 10 five strength when i get the spearman that's good saving up my gold so that when i need to i can splurge it on uh the upgrades to the archers but i could also in theory get myself a very cheeky quick heavy chariot that would help oh and byzantium declared on me whilst i had a, a scout right by their land this scout will probably die but if i can get a couple of pillages on these mines that would be hilarious and see what they do so their archers are attacking oh that slinger might die unfortunately there's not much i can do about that one but that's fine um we'll just attack get a little bit of experience upgrade to archer and i think you know what we're just gonna go archer mad one two like so we've already got the machinery boost which is ridiculous and move you through that's all i'm doing with that early game uh gold what, what are you gonna do that's fine um i actually am not worried about my defenses now i think that's going to be plenty so we're just gonna quickly dive in yeah i think getting a galley is definitely a good move so we'll get ourselves actually no we'll get iron working because i'm just to get that iron mine so i can get a unique swordsman that would that would be good oh i actually didn't show you the reliquaries palace um the, this relic 15 faith at the moment that's pretty cool isn't it awesome uh, i really want to get writers i want to get loads of great writers so that's something that i do need to focus on getting soon to get the infrastructure up in my cities just a little bit oh, you're gonna just attack my cities one at a time are you i mean that may work for you but hint it, it probably won't also i'm stealing all their gold <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful i love this i still have the most population out of everyone by the way is uh if it wasn't for this sort of annoying early war i could have been focusing on getting a bit more housing and we could have pushed out even further but now yeah, for now for now this is doing good yeah byzantium they their army is totally scattered they are absolutely left right and uh in all directions they don't know what they're doing their army is scattered it's not unified look at that i've already destroyed half of it uh it, it does help that i have my defender of the 
thief bonus, which is quite handy. And that's slowly spreading out and will continue to spread to all of my nations. There's iron working. Once the era rolls around, I should get that pretty much instantaneously. So yeah, you know what? I'm gonna just do the old, <laughs> absolutely insulting thing and actually start working on infrastructure now because I just, I don't think this war's going anywhere. It's fine. Don't even care. I'm like Byzantium. Are you actually attacking me? This doesn't feel like an attack. This feels, if anything, half-hearted. Golden Age. Yay. Okay, political philosophy. We're going to just lean into the Congo's natural abilities and we're going to go for Classical Republic. It gives me more great person points, more immunities, more housing more of everything it's wonderful urban planning is looking good i want builders as well i'm not going to oh do i now this is the thing do i actually work out the settlers and then buy the builders in is that the way around to do it because normally i use my faith to get settlers because they're more expensive i think i might do it like that we'll, we'll work builders i think that's a better and easier thing to work so we'll do that diplomatic league is also really good so i'm gonna pick that one up we'll go conscription to save us just a little bit of gold to start with i can always flick around the to something more useful later but at the moment as you can see we're having we're having a whale of a time with this city defense it's really not an issue byzantium are the only people not in a golden age i think it's because they were so worried about attacking me they didn't even think about it and we're gonna go monumentality there we go and starts to think about settling out where are we gonna settle what are we going to do it's, the whole the whole world is africa really we've got such a huge africa continent on this map i could go literally anywhere i want it's wonderful uh, the only problem is fresh water i don't it's just there's nigh on no fresh water anywhere so you know what we might actually have to go to the engineering and aqueducts pretty soon so what i might start doing is looking at mountain ranges for aqueducts to actually think about some clever ways of doing this so like for instance i'm not entirely sure where i would settle exactly here but if i put two cities on those two tiles i could aqueduct into the mountains and make myself a beautiful industrial zone i mean that that's an option. I could do that. This desert is looking a little bit funky, but likely to have quite a lot of production. So yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I, I need to think about this. I think at least one city's got to go up in this direction though, because this has been flooded some time. So yeah, let's go to there. My capital is at its housing cap, so I'm going to get the settler from here for now. Look, there we go. As I thought, it will get the population back next turn. That's cool. In the meantime, I'd like you to get the granary sorted to get the housing, and then we'll go for a holy site to work out even more. And this warrior is just wandering through my land, and it's like, oh, oh, sorry, what's going on here? And then it just gets pelted. <laughs> That's not a good place for you to be stood, friend. Yeah, this sort of defense is working quite well. Iron working. That's perfect. That's my unique unit. I'm just going to give myself an option to reload over in this city briefly. And I think we'll we just treat myself to one of those units very quickly that would be 38 melee strength would certainly make cities a little bit more powerful too powerful for um byzantium to do anything about me 440 gold to make that a thing it's quite expensive to be fair i'm still pillaging for byzantium <laughs> That's, this one scout has got like 300 gold it's incredible like he's just sort of stood there being like why would you leave all this stuff out and and everyone's like well don't complain just take it yeah, they keep changing their mind as to whether or not they want to attack me. Every time they lose all the unit strength, they're like, mm, no, this doesn't sound like a good idea anymore. And it's like, nope, it never was a good idea. Back off. Now again, I, I wouldn't normally bother buying boats on a landlocked map, but look, three city-states want a boat. So you have to ask yourself the question, why would I not? And there's also a small chance that Byzantium may actually have a city on this lake. And I get error score as well, so we'll, we'll put, put it there. But look, this city's now got 30 strength. There's no way Byzantium will take it anymore just having a look through the tech tree and i probably should get writing because it's there but then i'm going to go masonry to go the walls and then i need to unlock aqueducts because most of the cities i want to build in this area yeah they all need aqueducts so that's something i've got to go and fix relatively soon I have a lot of space between them though i'm making sure i'm gonna have big population cities with lots of space i think that'll be pretty good as you can see i'm also starting to build monuments everywhere now i'm gonna get theater squares monuments i want to race along the tech tree or the civic tree i should say now in order to get to guilds for my unique district but also i want to start to get towards divine right we need to get some relics going arabia's got their own religion it's not super far away from me so that's fine theater square perfect there we go in fact actually my capital's got a delightful space for theater square right here between my two wonders pop that immediately down lovely plus four 
Mm. And I think I'm going to immediately put down my literary tradition card. Look at that. Writer points everywhere. I don't need... Who needs eight gold per turn? Nah, I'd rather have two points. Two delicious points. Also, I have an extra envoy now, so I'm going to quickly pick up Kamasi. I'm building up to some amazing city-state trade routes. And, again, lots of visibility around it as well, which is good. Oh, that's a shame. The scouts that was pillaging Byzantium got killed, but they probably stole four, five hundred gold, something like that. They did a good job. I, I'm proud of them. They will be able to rest easy. In the meantime, I mean, I, I believe calling Byzantium's an attack an attack is still quite flattering to them. It's sort of flailing in my direction generally, but it's okay. We're very safe. We're very secure. It's going okay. I am now building infrastructure up. I like all the faith. Extra faith. That's, I mean, that's a five faith shrine. That's a big thing. Let's do that. Then we can get more settlers going. But yeah, we are building up everything. I want to make sure that I have all the faith income I can because it's what I'm using to get settlers. 320 faith I need for the next settler. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. So here's my city to the north now. That's my fifth. Look at all the extra food it's got. Oh, just that one for one tile is giving me five extra food per turn because of all of the growth bonuses I've got. It's wonderful. Here a score for a theatre square. Look at that. Yes, yes, we're getting some good stuff now. Just a district plan a little bit because I think we can do some interesting stuff here. If this city were to, for instance, get a theatre square over in that direction, I could then, in theory, get myself an entertainment complex on that tile. Is that even going to be the best thing? Oh, choices, 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 because I want the government plaza, I want the holy site, I'm about to get a commercial hub, that would be important and awesome as well. Where am I going to put the industrial zone? It's all good, it's all good, I need to get a builder going and get this going. Yeah, I think, I think we've got to focus on culture income, because if I can get myself my unique neighbourhood, that's going to be such a huge thing for my extra food. I'm just going to move my trader to my capital, because there's more districts in this city, there's only one district, so Kamasi's bonus won't be huge. but but it's better than nothing. City number six. There it goes. Beautiful. Oh, Byzantium is just being really annoying now. Like, it just they're just pillaging like random bits and pieces here and there like look he, he manages to pillage my bananas and then run off leave my bananas out of this that's what i say also they don't want peace which is very frustrating like we've been at war for far too long there's nothing i can do about it just stop it i can send a trade route to preslav or oh, the six faith two culture four gold and that's before i even get another two districts down in that city so that's preslav now on side lovely I'm gonna follow that up with i think rapanoi that's not a bad city-state to take on side, so we'll just put that one in. Good. Discovering all sorts of areas of the map now, getting lots of city-state thrones. More importantly, building up the infrastructure in my cities a bit. As useful as this production is, I'm going to flip to scripture because that gives me a little bit more faith, and faith means settlers. I've got some holy sites being built now, I've got shrines being built. I think we're happy on, on what's sort of appearing in my nation, but I just, as I say, settlers are kind of key right now. I have 24 population. I am way in advance of everybody else apart from India who have 22. So yeah, I think population is definitely key in this game. The more population, the more of all of the other yields you're picking up. Here's currency. And currency is really, really useful because, don't forget, Congo gets 50% more merchant points. Exciting, I hear you cry. It should be. Look, I've got some spaces for it. Actually, because I've got both Kamasi and Chingeti, it is genuinely really exciting. I do want to get as many trade routes as I can. We just need to work about getting them all. Let's get a government plaza down, get some more governor titles, only Pingala functioning on all levels right now. So whilst I'm using the faith to bring in settlers, I'm using the gold to give infrastructure, mainly to my capital, actually. So I just sold all my diplomatic favor for some gold. I'm keeping an eye out for trades, like Babylon is really trading well with me at the moment. They are playing ball, and I like it. Might be able to bring them away to my way of thinking. This is the time of the game, actually, where I want to be making friends with as many people as possible. Open borders, I mean, that's one way of making friends, and actually is really good because I do start getting a bit of tourism. India really do not want open borders. That's totally fine. I wouldn't let me in either. And Babylon doesn't either. What have I done? Why does nobody want me in their nations? I, I, feel, I feel like I'm being refused here. There we go. There's peace. They're going to give me 20 iron for it. Fine. But that gives me peace back with every everybody again. Oh, Babylon will immediately want to trade that iron away. Yeah, sure. Well, what a business deal. Make peace, sell the peace deal within a turn. That's great. Do you want open borders? 
I want to make friends with you by Zantium. Yeah, you know what? That's nowhere near as much. I can probably just give you Diplo favor for that. No? Oh, fine. That'll do. Open borders achieved. Hopefully they will think me friendly once they're done with that. Um, yeah, so now I can just sort of chill a little bit, relax, and keep building up the old infrastructure. Games and recreation. Lovely, lovely. I am not getting the great writers at the moment, but with this amphitheater that gives me four culture, I certainly shall. I mean, production in this city is doing okay, but it's not the best but I think that trade route that I had is now a little bit better yeah it's just it's just a tiny bit better how's my religion spreading slowly Byzantium hasn't got their own religion which is very strange to see normally they jump on that very quickly but you know what I'll take it that is fine connoisseur for Pingala that means with my nine population city we should be above 50 yep we're at 53 culture per turn very good indeed and I think we must be at the point now where we can get a settler yes we certainly are oh, beautiful let's keep on spreading these out keep on picking these up keep on settling wildly I've got six cities five for Byzantium four for Babylon six for China seven for India six for Arabia so I've caught up with the dirty AI that this is my time to now overtake them what I'm now going to do is effectively bribe everyone into being my friend delegation um no he doesn't want that okay fine but we can we can make sure Byzantium likes me although is that the first person I want to do actually Babylon likes me plus four for Friendship? Nope. We'll give him a delegation. Nope. Oh, this is going to be one of those games where nobody wants to initially be friends with me. Right, well, who is the most important trade partner? I want, I want Byzantium on side, right? I don't want them being mean to me. So I'm just going to give them eight Diplo favor. Feels painful, but I now have a positive trade um, dealing with them. They like me because of favorable trades. Hopefully they'll give me some peace and friendship and happiness and joy. Look, I'm giving you Christmas presents, Byzantium. I'm sending them to you from the heart of the Congo. Just enjoy them and please peace out. Be chill. That's that's my that's my Christmas message to you. Be chill. Chill out a bit. Next up for Pingala is Grants. I wanted to do that next because I already had 4.6 writer points coming in and also more artist points. Those are really exciting. China's actually got two theatre squares. Looks like China is going to go um, cultural as well. And that's actually a good thing. So I've mentioned this before, but when it comes to great writers, the fact that China is now going for them is a really good thing because we want all the writers to be taken. Now, the way the game works this out is that as long as the game is still in the classical era, when a great writer gets used up, it'll really another classical era writer and the more classical era writers that get put through the more cheap works of writing are in the game to be used later if the game goes into the medieval era and the classical era writer gets taken it loads a medieval era writer and I think there's a maximum of five so between me Arabia China we want all five to get taken ideally I don't care if I'm the one or I'm not the one to actually earn it myself I just want them in the game as soon as they're in the game I can buy them from people oh look at that sorry just a luxury i don't normally show you these boring deals but that's 12 gold per turn india will take that from delightful yum uh, no 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 after a shift in envoys kamasi has been taken i don't think so. oh saladin you you crumpet you i don't like that i don't like that at all hang on let's just do this sensibly so chingeti i think i'm the only person following this one i'm gonna put one envoy into there and then i'm gonna move armani into kamasi i want to keep kamasi that is a good source of gold and culture for me those city-state trade routes are going to be big big business for me later into the game and i do not want to let those go so yeah you get back here you i think i'm going to go audience chamber this run yeah housing and amenities in all my cities it stacks really well with congo i'm making huge giga cities and that's exactly what we're going to be doing oh india's got some tea tea for ursa i like tea Mmm, yum. Actually, some of my cities are starting to lack housing now, like this one. But then that was because I wanted to get the aqueduct finished in this city, which we're going to try and do as soon as we can. Only eight turns for that. That's fine. Don't mind that at all. Another city over there means I've now got a spare tobacco, which, oh yeah, I can sell for significant funds. Lovely. In Banza Congo. That's normally the capital of um, the usual Congo, or the original OG Congo, isn't it? Ah, uh, good times. I'm just going to treat Kabasa to this tile because I can quickly chop that, get to 10 population. First city in the world to get to 10 population, you say. Beautiful. That's exactly what we wanted to hear. And then I can get the commercial hub going shortly after. Let's get those trade routes sorted. Thank you very much. You settle too close. 
Um, hmm, do I want to lie to you? I'm going to take the Diplo favor. I don't think I'm going to be settling really very close to them. That was this city they thought was too close. I mean, honestly, Byzantium, you can, you can shove off. I'm not, I'm not going to be taking that from you, friend. I got the second great writer. That's fine. We don't mind that at all. Let's start putting that into this city. God, Byzantium's being an absolute problem for me now. Oh, I don't like the fact that you've got great people. Honestly, just chill out a bit. Why, why are you being like that? People of the world, take a, take a leaf out of Basil's book. If he's doing it, don't do that. Just chill. Be more chill. Okay, uh, Pingala is now totally fleshed out. Now, what I'm going to do is once the audience chamber comes in, I've, I've got Pingala absolutely where I wanted him to be. Oh, yeah, look at that. 36 core science, 54 culture, 10 population capital working really well for me right now. That's lovely. I'm now going to put all of my governors and start spreading them around my nation to give that housing and immunity boost that we so love. And as mentioned before, for all of these lovely bits of gold are going into my capital just to improve it a little bit. Up to two amenities in my capital, but I'll go up to four very shortly. Oh, Babylon have decided to start settling really near me to the south. Do we like that? No. No, we do not. I find that, if anything, rude. So I'm going to go and settle near them. Don't, just don't, don't do that. Come on. Stop it. Stop it, Babylon. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra. I am Salty Tech, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Doughboy91, Sean Critties, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Davalek, Skeptical Bear, Kroger Brand, Trail Mix, Alex Noob, Cinnamon Beard, Portland, Petra Ryan, Matthew Hatch, Amir EC, Henry, Rom88, Radiatore, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Boy Zorro, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan. Thanks everyone!